Suspense. The Armed Forces Radio Service invites you to hear The Shooting of Billy the Kid, starring Mr. Frank Lovejoy, in a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I'd done a lot of living for a kid 18 years old. And right then I could feel time beginning to run out. That was the night they had us holed up in the old McSween house. And the place burning all around us. And old man McSween sitting there reading his Bible. And me and Charlie Bodra knowing we had to make a break. Fire's getting hot all the time, Billy. When's it gonna be? Still got time to roll me a good smoke, ain't I? Well, this ain't hardly no time to be smoking cigarettes, is it? Ah, oh, we've been a tighter ones than this, haven't we, Charlie? Maybe you have, but I haven't. You realize we've got to run within ten feet of them fellas out there before we can make it to the woods? If we make it to the woods, we'll make it. Some of us. Hey, look out! Burning roof timbers falling! Now, ain't that convenient. Just what I need to light my smoke. <sighs> Ready to go, Charlie? I guess so. Good luck. He made it, Mr. McSween. He made it. I shall go now, then. All right. Hey, wait a minute. Where's your gun? I've never carried a gun yet, Billy. And I do not intend to now. I shall carry my Bible. It has stood me in good stead for many years. A Bible against them? Say, it might work. It might just work at that. You step out there where they can see you holding it, and I won't fire when you start across. All right. Now. Here do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's McSween! I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. They shot him. Nothing but a Bible in his hand. They shot him. All right, kid. You're next. Oh, here goes nothing. Come on, I'm waiting. Let's go get him. In the woods. Not me. I'll be seeing you fellas around. And when I do, watch out. <laughs> the Lincoln County War, they call that one. Just a feud between two cattle kings and me, nothing but a working hand. But seems like they blamed the whole thing square onto me just because it was Billy the Kid. A tough little varmint that had killed 16 men. From then on, it was me running and them closing in, and just a matter of time. That was when I first met Pat Garrett. Me and Charlie was hit out in the mountains. <laughs> oh, I'll never forget the first sight I had of old Pat. Hey, Billy, look at here. What is it? Full of riding up the trail. Oh, lanky, Gus, ain't he? Leg's pretty near dragging the ground over that poor little pony. Lanky or not, I don't like it. What's he doing up here? You know him? No. Howdy. You mind if I pull up a spell? It's a free country up in these parts anyway. Who just passing through? Not exactly. You're Billy the Kid, aren't you? Keep your hands in plain sight, mister. And get down off that horse real easy. All right. That's better. Oh, was you looking for Billy the Kid? That's right. What do you want with him? I got a message for him. You from the law? No, but my message is... Well, if you mean the kind of law like Bob Olinger and that bunch in Lincoln, I got no time for it. And you are the kid, huh? That's right. Now, what do you want? I got a message from General Lou Wallace. He wants to talk to you. Who's General Wallace? New governor of New Mexico. President Hayes just appointed him. 
He's waiting for you, Don Lincoln, now. You crazy, mister? You think either one of us would ride back into that town after what's happened? Ah, wait a minute, Charlie. You say... What's your name, anyway? Pat Garrett. You say this man was sent all the way out here by the president? He wants to talk to me? That's right. Well, if it comes from the president of the United States, I don't see how I can very well say no. Billy, you ain't gone. I'm going. He'll guarantee his safe conduct. <laughs> as far as he can. Oh, I know what you mean. Billy, you know Bob Ollinger will never let you get out of that town alive. Yeah, I'm kind of curious about that myself. By the way, Mr. Garrett, whatever made him send you? You're a stranger out here, ain't you? Guess that's the reason. Seems they couldn't find nobody else in Lincoln that took much to the notion of tracking down Billy the Kid. <laughs> Well, there's your town of Lincoln. That's her. And if there ain't Bob Olinger and the rest standing out in front of Murphy's store, just like they were waiting for somebody. They are. Word got around even before I left. No, I guess it would at that. Oh, you're on your own now, kid. I'm staying here. What's the matter? You scared? No. I'm just staying on my side of the law. What's that supposed to mean? Well, if I was to ride in there with you and Bob Ollinger and them started shooting, the next thing you know, I'd be shooting back. And the next thing you know, I'd be in the same sorry sort of shape you are. That's a good enough answer. <laughs> I'll be seeing you around. Hi, Billy. Hi, Bob. I hear you're the law around here now. I'm a deputy, yeah. You looking for some law? When I come looking for you, Bob, you'll know it. Right now, I'm looking for General Wallace. Smart kid, huh? You know where I can find the general? Yeah, he's sitting down there on the porch of the old Ellis place. Thanks, Bob. I don't want no thanks for you. Nothing. General Wallace? Yes? You wanted to talk to me. I'm Billy the Kid. Uh, but you're so young. Why? Uh, or, uh, shall we go inside, Billy? All right, General. I'd like to talk to you privately. Sit down. Thanks. Mm. A lot of paperwork you got on that desk, General. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm uh, writing a book. Ben Hur. About ancient Rome. I never had much score. I know you didn't. I know quite a lot about you, Billy. Well, not if you listen to the way they tell it around here, you don't. I've heard both sides. I know you didn't start the Lincoln County War single-handed. But frankly, Billy, the whole country has been shocked by the lawlessness and bloodshed out here. And some people seem to think you had quite a lot to do with it. I fought for my side just like the others did for theirs, that's all. That may be. But the point is... That I have been sent all the way out here by the President of the United States to put a stop to it. Billy, I want you to take off your guns. Now. And I want you to stand trial. <laughs> I don't mean to be disrespectful, General, but... You see that bunch of men standing in front of Murphy's store? Yes. Think I could walk past that store without my guns and get past it alive? You got past it just now. That's because I had my guns. And as for standing trial... I couldn't get any kind of a trial in New Mexico. All right, Billy. But I'm going to make you a proposition. If you stand trial and you are convicted, I personally will promise you a full and immediate pardon. Full pardon? And then what? Start a new life. Settle down. General, when Mr. McSween walked out in front of that mob, he was a man that never carried a gun in his life. All he had in his hand was a Bible. And they shot him down in cold blood. Now, nah, General, I got a few scores to even up before I settle down. Maybe it was fate. I don't know, because Pat Garrett and me got to be real good friends after that. I was hanging around Fort Sumner and so was he, and we used to see a whole lot of each other. 
And then I didn't see him around for quite a while. Until one day I walked into Jose Valdez's saloon. Pat! Pat Garrett, you old son of a gun. Hello, Billy. Long time no see. That's right. How about a drink on me? All right. Whiskey for two, Jose. Yeah, sure thing, Billy. Where you been keeping yourself lately, Pat? Oh, I've been here and there. <laughs> yeah, I've been hearing about some of those places you've been. Have you? Hey, ain't that Billy the Kid? Yes, yeah, yeah, that's right, Joe. Yo. Who's that heading over here? Joe Grant from Texas likes to think he's a pretty hard case. Hope I ain't gonna have that kind of trouble again, Pat. You're Billy the Kid, ain't you? That's right, and you're Joe Grant. Oh, you hear about me, have you? Oh, sure, I heard of you. Tell you what, Billy. I bet I'd kill a man today before you do. <laughs> I don't aim to kill a man today or tomorrow or any time. You think I don't mean it, huh? The latest $25 cash money right on the bar. Jose will hold the stakes. Now, what would I want to make a bet like that for? You scared of losing it? All right, Joe, there's my 25 just see that you don't kill nobody that don't deserve killing. <laughs> don't you worry none about that. I expect he'll sleep it off where he can do any damage. Where was we, Pat? Yeah, we was talking about the places you'd heard I'd been. Yeah, I heard you've been talking to the Cattlemen's Association. And I heard they've been talking about making you sheriff. That's right, Billy. I'd hate to see that, Pat. This territory is going to be a state someday, Billy, someday soon. And the state's got to have some law. For instance, you've been living off other men's cattle for the last two years. That's the kind of thing that'd have to stop. And uh, if you was the law, you'd have to stop it? Yeah, hey, Billy. I would. Billy, the Joe Grant's coming back up here. Thanks, Jose. Yeah, here it comes now. I was afraid of something like this. Don't worry, I'll handle him. Hello, Joe. Uh, hello, yourself. Can I help you? I'm collecting that bet from you, kid. <laughs> you seen he drew first? You all seen that, didn't you? Sure, sure, sure. Let's move along, Pat. All right. The rest of you fellas just take it easy. That way there won't be no trouble. Where's your horse, Pat? Right alongside yours. Let's you and me take a little ride. Might not be a bad idea. Hey, you know what, Pat? I clean forgot to collect that $25 bet. <laughs> Pat, tell me something. What? You gonna take that sheriff job? I already took it. Oh. Well, Pat, I guess this is where you and me part company. Guess it is, Billy. I'll be seeing you around. After Pat Garrett got to be sheriff, the cards was dealt, and nothing now but to wait for the showdown. And I guess I knew it, too. But somehow I couldn't bring myself to leave the country, and that's... How we happened to be holed up at the old sheep herder's hut at Stinking Springs. It was early the next morning. When you figuring to move out, Charlie? Most any time, I guess, Charlie. Well, I better feed the horses, then. Yeah. All right, easy, boy. Easy. You're gonna get it. Throw up your hands, Charlie. We got you covered. It's Pat Garrett! <laughs> oh. Oh. Charlie, you hit bad. I, I tried to draw on him. Lie down here. You'll be all right. No, Billy, I'm done. Don't talk like that. Billy. What? I want a parson. A parson? Uh, I've done some pretty bad things in my life. I'd like to get them off my chest before I die. How are we going to get a parson out here? Talk to Pat Garrett. Ask him to take me into town. Billy, please. All right, Charlie. Pat Garrett. Yeah, Billy. I want a parley. Will you come in? I'm believing, Pat. But 
I won't hurt you, Pat, and I won't hold you. I give you my word on that. All right, I'll come. I kind of wanted to talk to you, too. Charlie's dying. He wants a priest. Will you send him back to town? I'm sorry about that. Will you? Billy, you can take this as a compliment or not, but I don't dare spare the men. Best to send a couple and you was to get away again. Are you trying to bargain over a dying man's last wish? No. But there's been too much already about you and me being friends. That's all over. Maybe. But I wish you'd give yourself up. If you don't, we're going to kill you tonight or tomorrow or the next day. And I don't want that to happen. Is he there? Is Pat there? I'm here, Charlie. You... You do it for me, won't you, Pat? Sure. All right, Pat, here's my gun. Tell your men we're coming out with our hands up. So they caught me at last. And the trial was, just like I said it would be, short and sweet, and me sentenced to hang on the 13th of May. And they took me back to the jail in Lincoln, handcuffs and leg irons and two deputies to guard me day and night. And who were they? Jack Bell and my old friend, Bob Olinger. Know what day it is today, kid? 28th, unless I miscount. You didn't miscount. You counting the days just the same as I am. Why don't you lay off the kid, Bob? Oh, let him have his fun, Jack. While he still can. <laughs> Fifteen more days for you, kid. Then you'll be a dancing on the end of a rope. That'd make you mighty happy, wouldn't it, Bob? If you want to know the truth, it'll be the happiest day of my life. Well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Lots of things can happen in 15 days. You figure on making a break? Hmm. I just hope you try it. You see this double barrel shotgun? Yeah, I see it. And I've seen it before. Well, it's loaded with 18 buckshot. If there's anything I want more than seeing you hang, it's a chance to kill you myself. Morning, gents. Now, oh, Pat, everything all right up here? Just fine and dandy. Are the boys treating you right, Billy? Everything a condemned man could want, including Bob's daily lecture on the fine art of hanging. I thought I told you to cut that out, Bob. Oh, I was just ragging him a little. Well, I got to go to White Oaks today. Won't be back till tomorrow, so uh, I want you two to take good care of my boy. Here. Don't worry about that, Pat. Well, I'm going over to lunch. You guard him like I get back, Jack, then I'll spare you. All right, Bob. I'm sorry about Bob Ollinger, Billy. I know he's a mean devil, but he's my deputy, and I had to put him on the job. Oh, I don't mind. Fact is, I'm kind of glad it's him. Huh? What does that mean? <laughs> Nothing much. Now, Pat. Yeah? What are you going to White Oaks for? Just business? I heard about that business. You're getting a man to build the gallows. I'll be going along now. Hurry back with the gallows, Pat. It'd be a shame if you never got to use them. <laughs> How about a little game of blackjack till Bob gets back? Suits me. Got the cards right here. You want a bucket or a bank it? I'll bank it. I feel lucky today. Let's pull up by the table. <laughs> Not too close, Billy. I wouldn't want you to go making a grab for this gun in my belt. Now, how could a man in leg irons and handcuffs do a thing like that? I can hardly make out to play my cards. Deal them. I wish I was playing for money instead of matches. I feel real lucky. Oh, I'm sorry. I dropped the card on the floor. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll get it. Hey, you got my gun. I sure have, Jack. I'll use it on you if I have to. What, what are you going to do? Just don't make any wrong moves and you'll be all right going to lock you up in a safe place, and then I'm going to wait for good old Bob. Now, open that door and start marching down that hall. Jack, stop! <laughs> I hated to do that one, but I couldn't help it. I had to move fast now. I slipped the cuffs. I'd always known I could do that easy. And I started back to the front of the building. And then I seen Bob Ollinger's shotgun leaning there against the wall. I grabbed it up and went over and hit by the open window that looks out on the street. 
And sure enough, the next thing I see is old Bob hurrying down the street with his six-gun in his hand. Jack, everything all right up there? Hello, Bob. Billy? That's right. And looking at you right down the barrel of that shotgun of yours. No, wait! I had a blacksmith cut off my leg irons, and that was when I should have left the country for sure. But still, I couldn't do it. Fate again? Maybe. But then there was a girl in Fort Sumner, never mind who. But there was a girl. Who is there? It's me. Oh, Chiquito. It was so late, I didn't think you were coming. I said I would. Coming quickly. It's so good to see you. You too, darling. Billy, you mustn't stay, though. They say Pat Garrett is in town. Pat? No. Old Pat's down around Descosa. He thought I'd head south. Well, I don't know, but they say... Oh, Chiquito, what are you going to do? You you can't hide and run like this forever. I'm not going to, darling. I'm going to settle down like, like they always said I should. I'm going to Mexico, and you're going with me. Will you? Oh, yes, Billy. Yes, anywhere. We'll start in the morning. We'll be over the board in a couple of days. What? I'm half starved. You got anything to eat? Oh, no. Only a little bread and some frijoles. But Pete Maxwell killed a steer today. I'll go borrow some meat from him. Now go. No, Billy. It's just next door, and Pete's an old friend. Billy, be careful. Don't worry. I'll be right back. Ah, stranger. Uh who is it? You're one of them out of town sheep herders, ain't you? Who is it? No need to be so nervous. Pete, hey, Pete. You there, Billy? You asleep? No. No, Billy. So dark I can't see nothing in here. Who's that fella out on the porch? He... He... He's with me, Billy. Pat! I'm sorry, Billy. Sorry it had to be me that shot you. Presentation of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.